So dear friends, we are at the on the eve or rather the celebration of the holy week. I call it celebration because the whole week speaks of the joys and sorrows of Jesus. Perhaps the positive and the negative of our life and at the same time starts perhaps with despair but ends with hope the first day of the holy week is the palm sunday we christians call it palm sunday perhaps waving of the palms is always a happy occasion and so jesus was welcomed into jerusalem the happiest way the most celebrative way as it was the liturgy itself is starts with this procession of the palms as we call it and there's a beautiful gospel the gospel that speaks about the celebration in Jerusalem as Jesus was on his way to what we call Bethany and the disciples welcomed him the people welcomed him and waved as it were it's so beautifully explained in the gospel of Mark chapter 11 verse 1 to 10 this joy of the people on seeing Jesus they sing hosanna hosanna and of course the eucharist that follows has got the beautiful three readings and the readings as i would say in a way describe the agony and the ecstasy of Jesus the reading from isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 to 7 speaks about the servant of Yahweh you know these are these four special psalms that speak about the messiah about his suffering and the beautiful expression by which Jesus surrenders himself to God the lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught and at the same time the lord has opened my ears but then i gave my back for those who wanted to perhaps hit at me punish me and jesus succumbs to it surrenders himself to these sufferings you know the second reading is also a beautiful one where saint paul in a simple words explains the situation of jesus that he emptied himself the letter to the philippians chapter 2 verse explains this emptiness of Jesus that he didn't keep anything of his glory that he didn't want to retain anything of his past the what we call the greatness the grandeur as such but then he becomes humble like a slave and the gospel of course is beautiful it's not called just the gospel of Christ the gospel of the evangelist this day but it's called the passion of our lord Jesus Christ it's the whole passion that is read out chapter 14 and 15 of the gospel of mark and we see it it's beautiful it's long of course perhaps on that day many people find it difficult to stand and we tell the people you can sit and listen to the passion it flows like a drama drama and it starts with jesus visiting the leper simon the leper and the woman comes there to wash his feet and with that perhaps the starts what's called the backbiting jealousy criticism of Jesus and it flows all through till his death but then what is more important is it's not just a drama it's an experience of life that we walk with Jesus this living way of the cross so many stations are there so many instances are there so many persons Jesus meets and at the same time his own attitude to life and to death we see that how beautifully jesus first of all starts with a celebration of the eucharist he breaks the bread take this this is my body and he takes the wine the grape juice as it were and said this is my blood you know this is how he starts it's in a sacramental way of his own offering of his body and blood to the father in sacrifice and therefore from there begins the journey the journey to the cross 
and there are so many characters in this Jesus way of the cross that perhaps we cannot but identify ourselves with one of those characters if i were to stand in that procession if i were to meet jesus if i were to be present on that day when jesus carried the cross i would have been in the crowd but then what would be my character be that day would it be peter you know peter is oscillating he says that he will stand by christ he will stand by him till his death but then he betrays him or is it the disciples of jesus who are perhaps so scared and so indifferent to say that we don't want to go too close because we also don't want to be punished or die with him or is it perhaps the chief priest and the priests who are sitting in judgment who are in sitting in judgment perhaps i could be also the chief priest sitting in judgment because so many times we judge the people there is another strange character pilot pilot many of us are pilot we would like to help jesus but we have not the courage we don't know how to do it in the end we wash our hands like pilot let the sins of this man let the blood of this man may not come upon me he has not committed any sin but then i don't want to be part of it i wash my hands there are also the other characters of simon of cyrene perhaps who is forced to carry the cross some of us perhaps we are carrying the cross of others we call it the vicarious cross the cross of someone else and of course when pilate gives them a choice this barabbas barabbas we are cons- we are told he was a terrible man he in fact was was really condemned to die and he should die but then the story of jesus is such that barabbas the biggest robber the biggest criminal is saved and jesus who was perhaps the most innocent one is raised up on the cross the lamb of god there are also the other characters mother mary and so many others and for us for her it's not only flows like a drama it looks like a, a sort of a scene before us but then we are also part of it and so the palm sunday as it inaugurates the holy week perhaps we have to place ourselves where am i going to stand what am i going to do what is going to be my attitude to life and surely when jesus dies on the cross on the good friday what would be my attitude is it just a bystander is it just a curiosity or perhaps jesus death means much to me because he died for me he died for me so my dear friends i welcome you to inaugurate this holy week as it were with the palms and the liturgy but full of full of first of all joy because jesus doesn't go sadly to his cross Jesus goes perhaps in a happy way to say that ultimately I am doing this for the sake of others I am dying on the cross for your sake so let us take this sort of inspiration from the lord himself from his passion i now speak about the lenten practices as i said the seven practices today i take up what's called reconciliation and prayer pray we all know and prayer has to be the part of our life and what is prayer prayer is conversing with god talking with god and therefore the lenten season and especially the perhaps the holy week could be the season wherein i converse with god i sit in a quiet place i sit in a chapel perhaps maybe in some place which provides me privacy and a little of silence and i speak to god what am i doing where am i going why am i perhaps constantly irritated or maybe at that i am also part of what we call the process of irritation for others so therefore prayer is a beautiful time you know prayer is defined as the raising of one's heart and mind to god and requesting god for the good things of my life not only as a selfish request but also that i be useful for the others so therefore prayer is a time a very special time for us and of course we have examples of prayer 
the best prayer is the Jesus own prayer what we call the Lord's prayer and the prayer is beautiful because it has the elements that we have to think when we are praying what could be the first and the last and perhaps in between we say the our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil you know we have another prayer accompaniment of mother mary with us in this prayer when we praise and glorify for the good things that mary has done hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death amen and the shortest prayer the prayer for the holy trinity glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit amen there are so many other beautiful prayers and these are examples of prayer perhaps we can constantly you know our rosary is the best what we call a layman's breviary they call it a layman's prayer in which we meditate upon the whole mysteries of jesus life the joyful mysteries the mysteries of light the sorrowful mysteries and the glorious mysteries and we spend as it were a time our mouth muttering our hearts beating and counting of the beats together in this rosary the prayer prayer of the rosary so therefore the prayer is one of the important methods or rather the expressions that we use in the lenten season there is also reconciliation i speak of reconciliation what is reconciliation or the sacrament of reconciliation the sacrament of reconciliation we call it confession you know in the lenten season we make use of this especially to seek forgiveness of our sins forgiveness of our sins all of us have sinned humanity has sinned we have heard it often to to err is human but to forgive is divine which means it's natural for us to make mistakes and to sin but then we ask god's forgiveness and the jesus himself give us gives us the church gives us this perhaps exercise by which we can get our sins forgiven we can ask god forgiveness for our sins and therefore normally we say there are four steps for confession or reconciliation the first of all the confession of our sins itself the priest who takes the place of jesus as it were to listen to our sins and to forgive us and therefore we confess our sins and it's not perhaps we don't have to disguise to say that i have not done this i have not been that much it's better to be honest and say yes i have sinned i have made this mistake i have made this blunder in my life and secondly we ask god for mercy an expression of sorrow from our sides you know we have committed my sin and i'm just ex- i'm just rattling it off as if it nothing touches me nothing affects me i don't think it's going to be a confession confession is also being sorrowful for your sins and thirdly confession in the confession we are also given us what is called a small penance or rather reparation for our sins we have done something so let us try to repair it by a little penance sometimes the penance could be also that you have to undo what you have done to the extent possible perhaps if you have robbed somebody you have to give it back to that person if you have injured somebody surely you have to assuage his feelings if you have hurt somebody you have to say sorry that's the way perhaps we can do our penance and finally we say we ask god for absolution of sins which the priest gives us in the confession to absolve our sins you know it jesus himself who taught us and told us that in john 2023 if you forgive anyone sin sins we are forgiven but if you withhold forgiveness from any that is withheld this is the 
exhortation that Jesus gave to the church and the church forgives our sins and in the lenten season we ask God to forgive our sins in this sacrament of reconciliation i now introduce you to the paschal triduum you know this three days the most important days in the lenten season what we call the paschal triduum we call the holy thursday good friday and the easter sunday First of all Holy Thursday as we know we celebrate the sacrament of the Eucharist that Jesus not only gave himself physically but also sacramentally in the form of bread and wine and how on that day Jesus breaks himself for the sake of our survival and redemption and at the same time gives us the strength by his own blood by his own blood and this mysterious or other mystical celebration is also an outward expression in the washing of the feet just as jesus surrendered himself to us and died for us in the sacrament of the eucharist to rise again so also in the washing of the feet jesus shows that he can go down to this extent that he is nothing as i referred to the readings of the philippians chapter 2 it says that he emptied himself and therefore he washes the feet of his disciples to express and to make a sacrament of service a sacrament of love is the eucharist the sacrament of service is it way in a way is the washing of the feet which we are supposed to do also in our life that's the symbol that's the sign you know how beautiful it is to celebrate to have this this symbolic washing of the feet so many people really feel it and there are some families that i know carry it to their houses to celebrate this sacrament of service i got i said that to wash the feet of each other how beautiful it would be if you could repeat it in our houses each of us washing the feet of the other in the family or someone related to us someone who is against us or someone with you who are not in peace so that this sacramental celebration of service is always imprinted in us as a mark of our own love and service to god good friday it's another day wherein we celebrate we i say we celebrate the feast of what we call the death of jesus the death of jesus is perhaps the most sorrowful thing that could have happened but then we call it good friday and we celebrate it because by his death is our redemption if jesus had not died for us we would surely not be living we should now surely not be redeemed and therefore the whole day celebrations that day perhaps in the morning in the churches we have the way of the cross which is done publicly and everyone participates it but the evening celebration is the liturgical celebration we have the word of god which is proclaimed then we have the kissing of the cross the embracing of the cross itself because if jesus embraced his cross we are also called upon to embrace our cross and so this meaning of standing in the queue and embracing the cross or kissing the cross is to say that jesus i embrace my own cross every one of us has a cross by some are have the cross of sickness some have the cross of loneliness some have the cross of despair some have the cross of perhaps some physical or psychological torture that they have and some of it perhaps we can get out of it but there are some crosses we can't get out and therefore we embrace because through the cross jesus opens a new door for us and it's not that the cross itself is a curse that was the belief of the jews it was a scandal for them but for us cross is a ladder to success i have said it often there is no gain without pain and therefore cross also symbolizes our struggle towards success towards perfection that good friday represents and then we have the easter vigil we call it the whole of saturday is a day of silence jesus uh, lowered into the tomb as it were in the silence of the tomb but at the night the church becomes alive again and alive with the burning of the fire the embers the paschal candle and the whole liturgy celebration the blessing of the water and so many other things that symbolize the new light the resurrection of jesus if the death and sins represent darkness 
the resurrection of jesus is represented in the light in the lighted paschal candle and so i wish you a happy triduum holy thursday good friday and easter vigil and easter celebrations in order to complete our own role as it were to participate in the mystery of the death and resurrection of jesus i now speak of a special charity that we make during the month of the lenten season and very specially in the holy week and also at other times we call it the contribution towards the hunger and disease campaign of the church normally we keep a dumb box in the church and we say remember the poor remember those who are hungry there are some other ways also of collecting certain collections or contributions for this by our sacrifices perhaps every friday we have a, a fasting or abstinence that we don't eat meat so we say perhaps this sacrifice that we make we can put it into a, a place or a dumb box of somewhere for the use of the church's charitable needs this collection goes to what we call caritas india and caritas india distributes it for the places where there is need where there are tragedies where there are instances where people need our support and that's why the money is sent to the church as such so therefore i would request you to be also to be generous at least in this week that whatever you save not that we cannot put a more than what we say we can also there are many people who are generously perhaps believing that in giving to others is fulfilling ourselves there's more joy in giving than in receiving as mother teresa would say it so please contribute your might towards the hunger and disease campaign of the church there's a beautiful question here sent by someone about good friday what is good friday or rather why is it called good friday you know it's very interesting in english language we call this holy friday of our christians as good friday perhaps the non christians also can think that it is some big feast and uh, you know when i was a young priest i remember it was in a small place and they had this local newspaper for one page paper that used to come every day and the editor was quite a uh, friendly with me he was a non christian and he thought he would greet the christians on the good friday and you know he not knowing in his innocence in his ignorance he published the photo of the christmas crib on the front page on good friday <laughs> good friday and uh, of course some people of ours took offense and they some said bishop your for father you i was not a bishop that time i was a priest you have to go and to say that this is not correct this is not this one and the man himself realized and came to my house immediately and said father i'm sorry i didn't know it was not a big feast for you i thought it was something feast i hear that it's a very sorrowful day i said nothing of that sort for us christmas is the message of the cross and the cross or the death of jesus on the cross is the message of christmas or the easter for us and therefore there is nothing such thing as this is condemned this is adorable this is beautiful that is bad no for christian mystery is everything brought together and so the good friday as my friend understood it it's like a friday that is very much useful for christians you know in english language we call it good friday because on that day something good happened to us if jesus had not died on the cross perhaps our redemption would have been a question mark good friday is called good because it is through the death of jesus that mankind can receive salvation in that way it is good because jesus willingly died for us he i would say he happily died for us he happily died for us and he went to his death to say that i am doing something good you know suppose i have you see the scenes of sometimes there are some people who are going abroad i heard of a particular father of a family who was going abroad and i could see the wife and the children crying on the railway station they had to go from a station from there he was going to bombay etc crying and weeping but then the husband wipes the tears of the wife and said don't cry you know why i am going i am going in order to bring happiness to the family if i don't go 
surely you will not have this money and this perhaps and the wife wipes her tears and says no i was just crying because you are going but i know that you are going for a happy cause for the sake of our family something like that in good friday something good that happens to us by jesus death we don't call it i would say to say that something bad has happened to us but jesus death is something good news for us uh incidentally it's only in english language they call it a good friday in other languages don't call it good as such they have other words to to express it for example in german they call it car freitag car is sorrow so therefore what they mean is sorrowful friday car freitag they call it and in the spanish viernes santo it means holy sacred holy or sacred friday so in the different language different la- different words are there but in english i am happy that they have called it good friday because it's a good day for us i now take you to the news that is all known to you what we call the news of the elections the parliamentary elections the government last week has announced that from 19th of april to i think 1st of june almost 30 40 days are going to be elections to be held in different parts of the country karnataka is going to have elections on the 26th of april and 7th of may and so in this announcement has begun what's called the election process by which the people start preparing for the to cast their vote for candidates that are present themselves perhaps different parties or independent and each of them projects as a future leader a parliamentary leader by the ways that they have done good or perhaps by the ways they have influenced others as christians we also have to vote it would i would say it would be a sin on our part if we do not cast our vote because casting a vote is causing rather having casting our vote means that we prefer a particular person in order to be our leader and therefore not casting a vote is as good as to leaving others to make my choice i am not interested who is going to be my leader someone is going to choose and if they are not motivated well or perhaps they are misled by the propaganda and some other perhaps even money or any one corrupt practices we i would be succumbing to it therefore we have to elect our leaders and as i said in the past we have to leaders we have to elect leaders first of all who are secular who are not just of one religion as such but they belong to the whole indian panorama of different religions to take the people together they have also to be non communal you know we have heard, we have known what it becomes communal to be that frenzy to say that my religion is most important my god is more important we need candidates who are non communal we need candidates who are who respect the constitution of india it's a sacred document for us and therefore the freedoms and the rights that are mentioned in that the right of speech the right of religion the right to get married the right to for work there are all the rights and also the duties that the constitution a man who respects the constitution and finally a person who has got values in his life who doesn't succumb to what we call only the money or the influence the force the violence etc but he has he has got lot of values in his life we need to see these characters we need to vote for them and therefore i would i request the christians also in our churches to start this process i have spoken to our parish council members and especially the women's group to say that help the people first of all to check their what we call the vote id cards whether they are proper whether there is a mistake whether something can be corrected at the same time those who have not made their voting cards especially the young they can make their cards and when they are checked and when they are ready perhaps will be ready for the elections to elect the right person the right party the right choice that we can make in the in favor of the country so that our country that comes ruled by the future governance of these parliamentarians 
will lead us securely and democratically obeying the rules and regulations of the country and at the same time being always subservient and accepting the constitution as our sacred book i now speak to about something that i went and i was happy an experience for me to visit this church of st thomas foreign church we call it where our siro malabar christians are beautifully gathering together they had invited me for a very special function which was very touching you know the program was called maria divina the 111 shades of mother mary maria divina maria mother mary divina is her holiness and therefore as you know mother mary we have her picture because of her appearances here and there and she has appeared in so many places we know of a few places in lourdes in fatima velankani perhaps majagori there are five six that i can mention but i was surprised to know that 111 places mother mary appeared in history and appeared to the poor people to children and so many others and so what's special about this in thomas church they had kept this exhibition or rather the representation of mother mary in 111 places that she appeared we may remember the picture of lourdes mary mother of lourdes we can remember our lady of fatima perhaps two three types of dresses that she has worn in those uh, or perhaps the appearance she has made we are known but then to think that 111 types of appearance of mother were depicted by these women of the parish standing in that pose fixed as it were with their gaze towards the heavens it was a beautiful sight i congratulated the parishioners of st thomas foreign church where as i said sirumalabar christian sade the bishop of mandia bishop sebastian adiantarath was there and also so many pastors and the parish councils and the so many groups that come together in order to have this exhibition unfortunately as you know it couldn't be kept long because the ladies were real ladies and they were standing in that pose as it were hours together and it was beautiful to see that they were not distracted but i can understand they can't stand for hours together so that the people can gather i think afterwards states one i wish this could have been repeated in many places in order to first of all to give us that motivation to pray to mother mary at the same time to understand why mother mary appears in history i told the people that day mother mary is the mother of history at different times of the history of the church from the beginning of the church she has appeared in different times and mother mary is also mother of geography she has appeared in different places different she has not left she has not gone only to united states or the europe where there are people she has gone to the poorest of places according to the situation of the people appear to the children to the farmers to the ladies to those who are crucified to those who are in prison mother mary has appeared so many times in different places so therefore my dear friends i perhaps would encourage the other churches also to uh, to recall this memory of mother's mother mary's apparitions in different parts of the world finally i come to what is called the jewel of the archdiocese this time i speak about the jewel that is in our own archdiocese i would say in our own our palana bhavan or perhaps in the precincts of the archbishop's house and this jewel is what we call the bmsss anglo multipurpose social service society we have this society in our archdiocese from almost 1969 so many years that it has rendered service to the diocese in so many forms you know basically the bmss or the banglo multipurpose purpose social service society is a commission or the society of the poor the archdiocese service to the poor is done through this this commission or this society and it was started by at the time of bishop lourdes swami 
who started in this campus or this perhaps in this area this particular building called worker center it started as a worker center and the archbishop lord swami who had known the workers of different places especially in bangalore that time was just coming up the factories were coming the industries were coming the kgf the mines were coming and the salary the payment was very less the conditions of the of the of the workers was very poor and so the archbishop thought that time to start a center here first of all to give them courage to give them hope to say at the same time to train them to have different sort of activities and different types of programs in order to equip them you know in that time the archbishop also was instrumental in starting a deaf and dumb institute which was started by the holy cross fathers and we give our our support to them and there are so many other things that were started people of the old remember 40 years 50 years that they used to come very often to this building in order to have gatherings to celebrate the events of the workers and at the same time some charity that was done it was always remembered and so this building that's called the worker center has grown up to a big center now what we call the bmss and basically as i said it serves the poor what are the perhaps the activities before that bms is one of the karnataka's oldest non profit aiding the most vul- vulnerable since 1969 a charity evolved into a power house driving transformative development in bangalore we have five six districts besides bangalore central bangalore rural we have also chikbalapur we also kolar we have tumkur we have ramnagar these are the districts in which our pms is operative we work for the poorest of the poor we help people achieve dignified lives through a strengths based approach enhancing holistic development and we work for multiple causes across various domains since it's a society there are members and we have a director father santosh royan is the director and he has a team of people of which i am the chairman the vicar general sada vice chairman and there are many other members we plan together different activities and different programs basically perhaps these are the few ones that we are very much involved now first of all education of our children education of the youth formal and non formal and especially the dropouts the vocational trainings that we give for different classes and categories of people the nursing the nursing aides perhaps the hotel type of works and the trainings that are conducted by bmss in different places the women empowerment we have a very strong women's group and the women's what we call sanghas the self supportive groups that of the women that bmss also takes up also disaster management you know there is so many times disasters have taken place the covid was one big disaster before which the diocese the bmss came forward we are also before that the rains that caused so much damage in the other st- districts of karnataka the mysore the belgavi the gulbarga ballari and where we have also this one so so many disasters that we have taken place and the church was always in the forefront the health care presently the bms is also is conducting what's called the kidney or the renal dialysis and this dialysis that is given for few patients mostly for a, a nominal amount has been taken besides that we also have other health care the dais is also has started two health centers one in kgf calls in josephs health center is was a palya and also another st josephs health center at a place called teresapura of the kanakapura road we also take care of rather we are involved in the ministry of the transgenders there are many transgenders who has seek support from us you know at the time of covid i remember we suddenly received a phone call from a transgender group that was in ramnagar and they said we are isolated 
and at that time nobody is coming close to us and some of us are starving bishop could you help us at once the bms has sent about 300 packets of food for them and they were so happy that we remembered them that we met them in this need that was so acute for them we also have what we call housing for the poor the bms has helped repair and renew about 200 houses in kgf in other places with the help that we received from the italian bishops conference and we have also a plan to have in the diocese a housing for the poor in some way if we are able to get support from the public we would also like to help people build small houses of course we can't help them for the land because you know in bangalore it's a big issue it's a real estate you can't get land but for those who have lands we will try to help them and support them also by getting government grant or government subsidies that government gives we will try we also speak of what we call we have started here a legal aid center helping the poor who are struggling with the courts there are many people who do not know how to go to the court how to go to the police station how to depose themselves we where shall we go and therefore we have started a free legal aid service in the diocese that is operative on second saturday and the fourth saturday the lawyers some lawyers are here from 9 to 12 o'clock and anyone who wants legal help free legal aid can come we also look after the children the children's child care is taken care of and you know in this manipur issue the church took in a big way the bms is took in a big way helping and supporting almost 500 children in most of our boarding of our diocese the religious were a good big support for us to look after the children in their boardings and also educate them in their schools the arch diocese itself in our schools and boardings we have about 150 children and finally also we speak about what we call environment environment is a not the, not only the end topic the best topic because what we do for environment we do for the future and therefore the bms has taken many programs for example distribution of the saplings training the people teaching the people in how to take care of their waste and especially the plastics etc and this is what bms has done i would be very happy with your help and support to us because this i consider is a big jewel a jewel is not just that we keep in our shelves and in our perhaps in places a jewel is also when it is workable when it is profitable and when it helps so many people as bms does may this jewel of ours with your help and support shine ever more brightly in the archdiocese the shepherd's voice which is being presented by our beloved archbishop most reverend dr peter machado the archbishop of bangalore who takes so much of interest and concern in order to bring the various topics the contextual aspects in order to inform educate and catechize all of us the priests the religious and faithful of this vast archdiocese and i'm sure you are enjoying this a uh, program shepherd's voice and i request each one of you to share with your other colleagues friends and family and relatives near and dear ones so that everyone in this archdiocese can be more closer to listen to the archbishop on this shepherd's voice the weekly feature my dear friends as i have always told that this is a wonderful platform wherein we can connect to the shepherd of this archdiocese wherein he brings in the interesting topics in order to increase our devotion and love towards god and also to know the spiritual matters that concerns our faith in a very special way you are most welcome to raise to ask your questions queries and you can send them to us at archdblr@gmail.com and you will also see our mobile number in and through which you can connect with our media center our studios and the archdiocesan communication center 
please do write to us your feedback your opinions thank you continue to watch and continue to share with others